Hey, hi you. Hey, you should make hi. a video about living in space. Living in space? I mean, I kind of have to be in space to like show stuff and, and to do that video, you know. That's, well, you're going to space anyways, so you can do it then. Okay. Hello, hi you here. I'm in space. Why am I in space? Well, I'm here to tell you, oh, I'm here to tell you why uh, we should be up here in the first place and what it's like to live up here. Don't ask me how I got up here, okay? It's uh, just, a, just an ask. I'm currently on the International Space Station. It's in low Earth orbit, which means we're not very far away from the Earth. Well, and because we're not very far away from the Earth, that means that there's still quite a lot of gravity here. But obviously, I'm not feeling much of it. But because the station and myself are in orbit at the same time, we're not really moving relative to each other. So we're in an environment called microgravity. Microgravity is because all objects have a gravitational pull, however small. They all pull each other towards each other, even if it's a tiny amount. So that's what we get to study up here. Astronauts living in space long term, like myself, have a problem where we lose bone and muscle density if we don't work out all the time. That's not so much a problem if we're going to come land back on Earth. It takes a little bit of time for us to, uh, to recover. But say we're going to Mars and we have to do stuff on the surface, that's pretty bad. We need to be able to do stuff. But it's not all doom and gloom. There is some evidence that's showing that we might actually live longer in space because our DNA doesn't get damaged as quickly. Which is kind of cool, but we have to watch out for the radiation that's in space, because that could do worse things. Now flying around is pretty cool, but we have to make sure we don't die. There are a lot of risks here in space, like, I know, the air leaking out because there's a hole in the side of the station. There's orbital debris that can puncture through. Also, what happens if all the life support stops working? Like, we don't have any more carbon dioxide scrubbing, and there's no new oxygen coming in. That's pretty bad. We have to make sure that that's working. Speaking of life support, we have two different kinds of spacesuits up here. We have flight suits, which is what we wear if something goes wrong on assets getting here. And we have EVA suits, which are the spacesuits we wear outside if we need to repair something. Now this is interesting. Let's talk about the psychology of space. In space, you start to develop a sense of being away from Earth, being different to everyone else and set apart from them. Like if someone on the ground tells you to do something, you do it. But in the back of your mind, you know that you don't have to. There's nothing they can do about it because you're in space. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing either. It gives you a heightened sense of individuality. But also it can start to get really lonely up here. You miss things like rain or wind. And being with your family and friends because you're all alone. Hopefully in the future, no one will be truly alone in space. I highly recommend the audiobook version of Endurance, which is Scott Kelly's autobiography. He's an astronaut who was up here for a year. And that, that's quite the experience. And what's interesting is that little things like an experiment that had him grow flowers really helped him out, helped him get through it. Why do we do any of this? Why go to the trouble of going to space? What's important about it? Humans explore. We explore. If we didn't explore, we'd still be apes in the savannah. People migrated out of Africa to all kinds of crazy places, even America. And let's face it, we don't want to go the way of the dinosaurs, do we? That's bad. If an asteroid hits us, we're done. And those things are pretty mean and they're everywhere. The amount we can benefit as a species from going to space and living in space is tremendous. Just like when we went to America, just like when we went to Europe, just like when we learned how to fly. I think Tchaikovsky, the grandfather of rocket science, put it best when he said, Earth is the cradle of mankind, but one cannot live in a cradle forever. This has been Hayu. Bye.